Saturday. Really? Yeah. Today, the first, it is for, yeah. Are we like the first group to come through? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Isn't it usually like, I feel like we've done Fridays before, earlier in the day. It starts earlier. It starts around like noon. Yeah. So. But no panels and... Nothing and starts till press. like 2, 3 o'clock. Okay. Usually. Happy hour. Happy hour <laughs> panel. I want everyone to get off work and get here. We're going to show people like the first 20 minutes of the, sh of the oh. premiere. Nobody oh. knows that yet. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Awesome. I wish we were doing this after then. <laughs> Are you guys going to go to the panel? Yeah. How early uh, in your plans uh, was there a six year time jump? Um, you know, the time jump in terms of how long it is came about because we, the whole season, in season four, we're talking about how this death wave is coming and the, the earth isn't going to be habitable for five years. And so I didn't want to tell a story in season five of like, these separate groups for the whole time. I jokingly say I wanted to skip the boring parts. So, you know, we, and then we added that extra year and seven days as a way to sort of add some mystery. Like why, if they could come back, why haven't they come back? You know, why, why hasn't Space Crew come down? And why haven't the people in the bunker come up when they can? Um, so I would say it was pretty early in the, in the breaking of the season that we knew that there was gonna be a significant time jump. You know, we start the, season, the story in season five, there's some flashing back, but we start it roughly around the time that all those isolated re uh, arenas come back together. So, reunions happening. I had one and I just lost it. <laughs> That's why we should write things down. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about like the challenges of kind of rediscovering these characters now that you've kind of placed them you know, a sizable amount of time into the future because yeah. six years doesn't feel like a long time, but it, it, is. it is a long time for people to grow, especially in these like extreme situations. So, yeah, uh, six years is a long time. Yeah. I'm what sorry, it, what's the, I oh, didn't get well, to the question. The, well, I didn't uh, ask it yet, actually. <laughs> um, did you find that it was harder to tap into some of these characters more than others? Like, who was the um, most challenging to write? Well, it was tricky for sure. The trick of a time jump is, you know, especially one that's as long as six years in a show where, if you think about it, from the first episode in season one to the last episode of season four was like ten months total. So that's and look at how much they've changed from from the first to the last. And now we take them and we separate them for six years, which is you know eight times at least as as much as they've ever been in our lives. And so a lot will change. And so the trick is, they gotta feel like the people that we've come to love, right? They can't feel like totally new people, but they also have lived six years of lives and, and need to feel different enough to justify this, the conflict that's gonna arise as a result of who they meet when they come back down. The group in space, you know, they've had their six years together. The changes are something that you're watching happen every day, so you don't really notice how different you are. And then you go back to your high school reunion, and it's like, holy crap, that is like, that. you can't be the same person I went to high school with, right? So it's not quite like that, but when they come together with Octavia and, and the group in the bunker, for instance, it's like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. I want to know how this happened to you. And Bellamy has a hard time adjusting to who his sister has become, for sure. And vice versa. Does that kind of create more friction amongst they're already kind of crumbling relationship because they never um, have really like settled things. But. They got to a pretty good place, I think, in my mind anyway, at the end of season four. You know, they were on the radio and she was, they told each other that they loved each other. And, you know, uh, so I think they got to a pretty good place. And then, you know, Bellamy, of course, has spent the last six years thinking, I gotta get down there, I gotta help her, you know, I gotta get back to my family, my sister, that's the thing that's always driven him. And so when he meets her again and he sees the way she is, yeah, for sure. You know, Octavia has had to do some really dark things to keep that group underground together and unified and to lead them. She's had to make some really hard choices, which have kind of probably affected her soul on some level. She's she's really, really damaged is maybe the right word for her, but, you know, hopefully we understand why she is the way she is. You know, she didn't do anything that she didn't feel she needed to do, if that makes sense. But that's the tricky one. That's the one that I'm the most anxious and excited for the audience to sort of react to. Could go anyway. What Could have been a no. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. 
what do you think the biggest challenge like writing and creating this season was? The time jump was definitely the biggest challenge in the sense of, you know, we needed to we needed to fill in those blanks for ourselves. Mm -hmm. What happened in that six year period? How to make sense of mm -hmm. this world that we encounter in the bunker, you know, and how how each of them has changed and then putting them back together and you know being true to the fact that they are different, they're not the same. Um, and then, you know, figuring out who they are now. And I mean that in terms of relationship mm -hmm. too. Like Bellamy and Clark are very different. Bellamy now has this family this one crew family, a space crew family rather. Clark has her daughter, essentially, and what's going to happen this season when those two things don't need the same thing? You know, what happens when what's right for Maddie's not what's right for Murphy or Raven or Echo or, or the people that Bellamy now considers family? So we'll see conflict from that for sure. Richard said that. Um, so we have, uh, no, go ahead. Uh, Richard said that some of the actors filled in their own six years in space yeah. uh, backstory. Did any of them come to you with, I think this is what I was doing for six years in space, and you said, no, no, that's not. Uh, I'm sure that happened. <laughs> I, think, I think it happens more like this, though. You know, we have conversations at the beginning of the season. I've worked with these guys for five years in most cases now, and I know how each of their processes work, and I'm available to them as much or as little as they want me to be. Um, and then they'll do their homework and they'll fill in the blanks so that their characters are feeling real in the moment. And then they'll read a script where I tell the story of what really happened and they'll be like, ooh, got that one wrong. <laughs> nope, okay. So, yeah, that's more... Sometimes they suggest things too, for sure, you know? I mean, these guys know their characters inside and out. Um, so, that's a luxury of working together with the same people for as long as we have. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about Maddie? Because I think that, you know, we've seen a lot of how we imagine Clark is going to react now that she's got Maddie under her wing. But what is, is Maddie kind of like as, as a character? Maddie, you know, uh, Lola Flannery who plays Maddie's great. I can't wait for people to see what she's doing. We're incredibly lucky to have found her. Um, and her role this season is not just as like Clark's important, significant person. Um, she has her own really, really important story that happens this season, um, which puts her in danger and which obviously sort of ignites a thing in Clark that she has never had to deal with before. It was really exciting for me. I'm a parent, and I know how that was when you know your priorities shift in an instant when your kids are born. And you also sort of are given a new window into what your parents must have felt like too you know and so it changes her Clark's relationship with Abby as well but yeah Maddie's Maddie's really cool Maddie's a very cool new character are, are we gonna get any more of Maddie's backstory yeah kinda, we'll understand okay. who she is why what she, she was doing so, kind of when the hundred first got there are we gonna get uh, that or not really I mean okay. she lives she's from shallow Valley so okay. she's from the place that Clark finds her way to the reason she survived the death wave is because she's a nightblood yeah and so, uh, you know, that becomes a thing, and, mm -hmm. and the two of them, you know, their relationship is explored in detail in 501. Like, we, mm -hmm. what we're going to show today is the first 20 minutes. It doesn't get all the way to the meeting of mm -hmm. Maddie, but that's where that episode goes. It's a crazy episode. It's literally like 28 minutes of just Eliza. She's alone on Earth and, you know, trying to survive. And then she finds the garden, and then she finds the kid, and... I'm not going to ruin the whole thing, but anyway, it's a totally special episode. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's all right.